Hello and welcome to update number three for my layout. This is going to be quite a short video. All I'm going to be doing is discussing what you see in front of you here, which is a traversa. Now, if you're not aware, a traversa is a way that you can have a staging or fiddle yard in a very compact space. If you think of how a, a normal um, fiddle yard or um, staging yard would be, you'd have a track, a track coming in, and you'd have a set of points and a set of points and a set of points and a set of points, and it would all come out to a big uh, fan. But the, the angle of a lot of points is one in six. So for every, you'd only be having one inch of this way for every six inches of that way. So you have so much point work that it would be most of this board. If you wanted as many tracks as you could fit in this board, you'd need at least this length um, of just points and then the, the fiddle yard would start. So a way you can get around this is by having a sliding surface, like this. So, your train comes in, and you simply adjust this to a matching track with another train in it, and that train then drives out. And it will give you, if you think in double O gauge, you could probably fit, um, I don't know, eight rail, eight sets of tracks here, um, I think you probably even wouldn't use tracks, you'd use this, aluminium angle, and you'd use that to, uh, for efficiency, just to have that going all the way down, and then the, this, this, this little lip here would, would form the inside edge of the rail, uh, as far as the trains were concerned. Um, but basically, very cost-effective and space-effective way of having a staging yard. Um, it's built out of stuff you'd find in a normal DIY shop. So I built the frame. This, is, this frame runs the whole length around the sides and around the back, and it's of three-quarter inch by three-inch uh, softwood. So this is an off-cut, just like this. Um, and you can see that I have um, countersunk and screwed it in straight into the edges. Um, I used a right-angle clamp to make sure these were nice and square, but I didn't really need to. Um, and then the, that, that was how you, and you need this surface, for example, over here, is just, uh, for now at least, is just nailed on with a couple of uh, nails because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this, so I wanted to make this part removable. Uh, and that's, that part is how you'd typically do any other module. So here is a module that I've built. Here's one I made earlier in the Blue Peter fashion, which you can see uh, is built with the same framing. So it's three feet by 18 inches, um, and that will be uh, a scenic board. Now, the key differences between that and this is that this needs to slide, uh, which means I can't fix this surface straight onto this wood because obviously it, would, it wouldn't move. Um, what I've done is I've added, you can see here, and I'll, I'll flip the, uh, the assembly in a second so you can see in more detail, um, more countersunk bits. These are into slats that are running horizontally, but flat rather than vertically. And on top of those flat str struts, there are normal kitchen drawer runners. So you can buy these in packs. Um, they come in, normally come in pairs, so annoyingly I have one extra. Um, and they are around 10 millimeters thick, which means all I need to do is recess these struts 10 mil down, and then this, the, the very top surface that this screws onto will be flush with the, the top of here. So in theory, that would slide perfectly. In practice, what I've done is raise it up a little, so this is a little higher um, than the, the base surface here because I need uh, some, some movement. I don't want it to scrape. So um, the way I've, I've ensured rigidity, because if you think that without, with, with just these, the only thing supporting this board would be these screw points, uh, which are coming from underneath so you can't see, um, for these runners. So I've added these um, strips of... Um, one and a half inch planed uh, timber to the outside to give it some rigidity so it doesn't sag. Uh, and I've added here a strip of aluminium angle. And so this is about one, one and a half mil. And the, the surface of this most uh, upper runner, you know, the, 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 the surface on which I'm screwing, um, is about one mil higher than the boards. So what it means is that the underside of this uh, is flush against this aluminium surface here and is, is screwed in here. Now, I foolishly haven't added the, um, the runner onto this side yet um, to, uh, to smooth the, the, the running on this side, but um, that is essentially the components. 
In terms of construction methods, sorry, if I just, and one, one thing that's nice is that it slides quite freely. I mean, I'm just using one finger, uh, but it's got a soft close mechanism, which means as it gets right to the end, you've got a little thing that you can push with your thumb, and then that is, that is now locked in, and uh, it takes more of a tug to, to release it, so it's not going really to flopping around. Like I'm sure if you've been uh, carrying drawers or uh, chest of drawers around, and as you're moving it around, the, the, all the drawers open and everything falls out. Um, that won't happen here. So this is the underside. You can see it's very simple. I've got my horizontal bracing, and I've got the underside of the traverser. This is the underside of the aluminium angle and the underside of the transitionary piece. Um, it's, it's really quite simple. The reason that I've got this transitionary piece, as I said, is that I'm not sure on how I'm going to... Um, transition from a scenic section to the traverser. I wanted it to be self-contained, so in theory I can have any anything on this side, and then I can use this space uh, to transition. So if I'm in an urban scene, this can be a retaining wall. If I'm in a rural scene, it can be a, a, very, I guess a very sharp embankment and a bridge. Um, it could be between warehouses. Um, there's a lot that can happen on this section. And then that way, I don't have to worry about trying to uh, perfectly align this traverser board with whatever's on here. I can use this to, to raise the rail up slightly. I can use it to spread. If I've got multiple tracks coming from this side, I can put gentle curves in to separate them more as they come into the, the traverser itself. Now, just a quick view of underneath. It's probably not going to be great for lighting, but you'll have to excuse me. This is just what it looks like underneath. Sorry. There we go. So these are where I marked the uh, the extent of the drawers, and I've screwed in there and screwed in down here. Now using, I've like actually used five screws, so two in this side, one in the middle, and two on this side. Now I did initially have a bit of a problem. You can see I've got some uh, multiple marks here. I, I mismarked this horizontal brace, so it actually was tipped. So I could screw in this side, and I could screw in this side, and it was straight. As soon as I screwed this one in, however, when I pushed it back, the angle was, was pulling that way. And of course, it's rigid. It's not going to go anywhere. So it caught and caught and caught and caught, and I couldn't close it properly. So um, thankfully, that was the one, the one in the middle was the one that was bent, so that was an easy fix. I simply uh, got a set square and used it, uh, clamped it on both sides, um, unscrewed these two since the front would be a pivot because it doesn't really matter where it is this way as long as it's straight unscrewed these two clamped the square into place held this re-screwed it and then um, simply extended these arms as much as possible I extended the, the traverse as much as possible extended these arms as much as possible and then screwed it in and that is basically it I'm expecting that I will need to register the tracks. So I'll probably have, because of this moves forward, if, I'm, if, the, if the layout is on that side, it moves forward. It's actually most advantageous to have tracks here because it means that this track can access the, mo the rearmost uh, track of the traverser. Uh, conversely, it's less useful if the, the tracks enter on this side because I'll be able to shuffle them like this, uh, and, and that won't be all good at all. I guess you could have one on either side if you had something going on. Um, yes, but that's it. I, I think if this goes into, if I end up doing a double O gauge or EM gauge layout, uh, what I will be using is some of these aluminium angles as, as rather than flex track, and I may in fact extend them slightly out on this side. Uh, and that's m entirely my fault because I was measuring my maximum train length using the wrong coaches and the wrong locomotives. Um, if, it, if I'm using any, literally anything else, um, then I think I should be fine. If, if my plans change to something more rural with shorter trains, it'll be fine. If I go with two mil fine scale, it definitely will be fine. Um, so that's it. I hope this... this um, this helped if you're thinking about building your own traverser. It's really not that difficult. The, the greatest challenge is just to get going. I was very um, unsure, um, but I think that just taking my time and trying to get things square 
and um, ensuring that I built in tolerances and used screws and bolts and shims and things rather than nailing and gluing, it meant I could rework. This top surface has come off about 10 times um, during the construction. So I'd really recommend giving it a shot. Um, and that's it. So if you've got any questions, of course, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise, I'll see you in the next update.